Today, I'll show you how I use a Raspberry Pi as a 24-7 Christmas tree webcam, and how I receive push notifications when new players logged onto the server. I'm Ryan, aka I Make Stuff, and this is part four of my Minecraft controlled Christmas tree tutorial. Hi folks, this is it, part four, the end. If you missed any of the other sections, be sure to check them out as well, so you can understand how the light control path worked. Also, since this video will live longer than the tree cam does, this box will let you know if the lights are online and ready to play. So when I first imagined this project, I planned to use an existing streaming service to run the tree cam. However, I found that services like Livestream and Ustream have too much delay, and I knew that people would have a hard time feeling like they're actually controlling the tree unless the video responded very quickly. The video latency needed to be almost nothing. So I turned to the Raspberry Pi. I used an older version of the Raspberry Pi, but things should work basically the same regardless of which version you have. In order to set it up as the tree cam, there were only three simple steps. First, install the operating system. Second, attach and enable the camera module. And third, install an interface to control the camera. Basically, you need to copy the operating system to an SD card. Then, when you boot up your Pi, it will automatically install. There are a few different ways to do this, and I've linked to step-by-step -step instructions below. Next, we need to attach and enable the camera module. I've linked to a handy guide below, but basically, the camera connects via ribbon cable to this port on the Pi. You pull the connector tabs up to open it, make sure the exposed connectors are facing away from the Ethernet port, then insert the ribbon cable a couple millimeters, and press down on the clips to lock it in place. A properly connected cable should look something like this. Next, you need to enable the camera, so type sudo raspi config into the terminal window. Select enable camera, hit enter, go to finish, and reboot the Pi. You can test if the camera is working from the command line, as outlined in the Raspberry Pi camera setup documentation. To access the camera from the web, I found this amazing pre-made interface by Sylvan Melchor called RPI Cam Web Interface. I basically used this exactly as is, with very minimal customization. This is installed the same as anything else on your Raspberry Pi. There's full step-by-step -step instructions linked in the documentation below. When it's finished installing, we can test it out by navigating to our Pi's local IP address. If you see this page, or something similar, everything is working as it should. Now, this gives way more control than we want to expose to the internet. If you open up the index file, you should be able to delete some of the extra buttons and just leave the preview image. In order for us to reach our Pi from outside the local network, we need to punch a hole through our router's firewall. Side note, if you plan on exposing your Pi publicly, make sure you know how to keep it secure. If we test our IP right now, using canyouseeme.org, we can see that no traffic is being allowed to pass through. We need to do some port forwarding in order to let the traffic through. This can be done a ton of different ways depending on your network configuration. Each router is different, but a quick search should give you specific instructions for your hardware. I have a Bell Home Hub 1000, so the steps I took to expose my Raspberry Pi to the world were as follows. I open a browser to 192.168.2.1, click Advanced View, click Network Settings, enter my password, then click Port Forwarding. Then I click Create Rule and enter a name for the rule. I'm using port 80 both internally and externally. Leave protocol set at both and select the Raspberry Pi from the device list. Now when I click save, my rule appears in this list above. And port 80 should now be forwarded to my Pi. Now, if we run the same test on canyouseeme.org, things look good. So, if everything is exposed and working properly, I should be able to type in the external IP address of my home network and see my camera image. But, you can see this doesn't exactly work. I banged my head against the wall for an entire night trying to figure out what I'd done wrong here. But ultimately the fix was simple. I can't access my home IP address from my home IP address. It gets confused. So I tried it on my phone while connected to a separate network. And it worked perfectly. Now, one little hiccup is that my internet service provider doesn't provide a static IP address. So every time my home IP address changes, the link to the Pi is lost. 
This is solved using a dynamic DNS service. Basically, a dynamic DNS service acts as a pointer to a dynamically changing IP address. The Raspberry Pi has a small utility installed that will contact the dynamic DNS service and register its new IP address anytime it changes. So if we use the address we set up with the dynamic DNS service, we never lose connection, even if my home IP address changes. Of course, there's full instructions for this linked in the description. Now let's go back over things quickly to make sure they make sense. First, you need a Raspberry Pi with the operating system installed and connected to your network. Then you install and enable the camera module. Then install the RPI Cam Web interface, punch a hole through the firewall with port forwarding, and a final step, if you don't have a static IP address, register with a dynamic DNS service. Now we can always count on our Pi being reachable from anywhere in the world. So that's the tree cam in a nutshell. As you can see, I've mostly used pieces of work that other people have done, so I highly recommend checking out them links. Next, I want to show you a little extra piece that was running throughout this project. If you logged onto the server, you may have noticed I was often there chatting on the console. That's not because I was watching the console 24 seven. It's because I received a push notification on my phone every time someone new logged onto the server. I thought that would be useful to keep track of things. So here's how I did it. Pushover is a great little app that lets you receive push notifications from just about any source. You can set up notifications linked to pre-existing services or you can use their API to trigger push notifications from almost any application you create. I used Node Red in Bluemix to trigger the messages, but it all originated from that amazing plugin called Scriptcraft. Scriptcraft lets you listen for game events and run code when they are triggered. One such event is the player join event. This code runs every time someone joins the server. If this is their first time logging in, we log new player detected to the console and run the push message HTTP function with these two variables. Notice the player name gets added into the second variable. If they have been here before, we log same old folks and that's it. The push message HTTP function runs just like our update RGB HTTP function, except it takes an additional variable MSG. This variable is where the player name was attached in our listener function, and it gets sent out as a parameter in the HTTP request. The node red layout is almost identical to our light control layouts from before. The only difference is some extra debugging nodes that I've left in. When the push notify node is activated, this function sets the token and user, then builds it into the URL along with the message.payload.script variable which contains the username we've passed from Scriptcraft. When this HTTP request is sent, Pushover sends a push notification to my phone constructed from the variables I've entered here. And that's how I use my phone to monitor new players on the server. So I also thought it worth mentioning how great Google Analytics was for this project. I'm sure most of you looking to create a project like this would already know about Google Analytics. But for those of you who don't, Google Analytics is completely free and provides amazing statistic tracking of traffic through your website. Using analytics on my phone, I could check approximately how many people were watching the tree cam at any given time. The highest I saw was just over 200 people viewing the tree cam at once without it crashing. Not bad for a little Raspberry Pi. And that's a wrap. I really hope you found this tutorial helpful. Again, I've tried to cover every piece of this project without being too long-winded. For this section especially, be sure to check the links in the description. Most of these links are what I followed step by step to get my Raspberry Pi up and running. The Minecraft Christmas tree has been an amazing project to work on, and I can't wait until next Christmas rolls around. Until then, I've got some other projects in mind that I've already started to work on. I don't want to say too much, but it involves these. It should be ready to launch in about a month, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. Thanks so much for watching. If you want to get in touch, drop a comment below or follow me on Twitter at I underscore makes underscore stuff. As always, I'll try to answer all your questions or at the very least, get you pointed in the right direction. That's it for now, folks. My name is Ryan and I make stuff.